do we think this E3 was great? Um, and how do we see, we kind of talked about Summer Game Fest and how we see that rolling out in the future. Um, so let's start off. Overall, was this a good E3? I know that's a very broad question, but I'm still putting it out there. Uh, Caboose, do you want to kick things off? Sure, sure. I, I don't think, I'll say that I don't think it was a bad one. Uh, I don't know if it was necessarily like they knocked it out of the park or they nailed it, but I don't think that it was like horrible. You know, I think Xbox's showcase was really strong, mm-hmm. filled with a ton of cool games and some exciting reveals. Square Enix had the Guardians of the Galaxy game, and I know that there are some mixed opinions, but really cool that Square Enix and Marvel's partnership isn't just games as a service games. You know, they got a single player action adventure that's completely story driven, no DLC, nothing. I think that that's awesome. It's something to be excited about. Um, and then Summer Game Fest, I guess if you want to, if you want to pile that in with D3, I would like, maybe t- let's leave that out. But then besides Xbox, besides Square Enix, then you have, you know, Capcom's presentation, which is a bit of a disappointment. Um, and then Nintendo's, which I do think was for the most part, good. It was um, a fairly exciting E3. It's just one of those things where I wish I was there. You know that yeah. that there is there is no way you feel the hype like you do when you are at E3. You know I don't want to discredit the fun that can be had at home because E3 is still something that a lot of people have to just enjoy from home. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I I know that just as much as many people. I've only been to like three E3s. Um, I've missed plenty of years, plenty of exciting years. Um, but it just it was one of those things where this is a year I wish I was there. I wish I could have been there in person. Hear the crowd going crazy because there's just no experience like it. It's like going to the movies. There is no experience like it. Um, so it was unfortunate in that case that we couldn't be there. But I think they may do with uh, the resources that they had. And considering the circumstances, we got some pretty cool showcases, some pretty cool games. And it was fun. It was fun to just have those vibes again. The E3 week, you know. Being ready to, especially people in our space, being ready for all the work <laughs> that's yeah. ahead. That was yeah. uh, that was fun for me. I was exciting to kind of get that feel back. How about you, Malik? Um, E3 was, and Summer Game, it's not really Summer Games, but E3 was very mediocre for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I just felt like there... <sighs> It's hard because I'm a PlayStation fanboy. Obviously, love me some PlayStation, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it didn't really feel that satisfying. To be honest, the big takeaway from like that week of announcements, the one thing that sticks with me the most is Battlefield 2042, mm-hmm. and like, cause that for me that was pinnacle E3 because not only did they show this incredible trailer like to tease it all off a a couple days before the event started then you find out that the gameplay trailer that they're showing you know on the sunday was actually like it was the gameplay trailer that you saw or the trailer that you saw before was actually real gameplay like that was cool it felt like this big kind of uh announcement because that's something that people have been waiting on for a long time everything else felt like fan service to me um Mm -hmm. i felt like i was just getting a lot of mediocre thrown at me um constantly and it didn't leave a lot of room for some of these smaller titles to stick i feel like Mm. we got so much that's just gonna get lost um in the announcements and it didn't feel i guess that segmentation is something that i really liked with the traditional e3s um of being like okay this day i got this press conference i can digest all of this news that kind of came out um and like you said caboose just watching it from home didn't have that same experience uh because i remember watching when they did that live uh musical performance for the last of us and it was just like this this beautiful like moment of like games and art coming together and it feels like summer games fest really missed the mark on having that same impact but this is just the start for them Mm -hmm. and to be honest i feel like summer game fest and e3 are just cannibalizing each other at this point they either Mm -hmm. need to figure out a way to work together um or kind of like separate their schedule so that way they're not hurting each other and you know the community in the long run 
I mean, I, I agree with that, Malik, but it's it's all going to come down to who who gets the uh, the L.A. Convention Center. <laughs> well, uh, well, I, when when well, when when E three or when things come back in full swing and we can go to these events again, that is a huge part of what makes E three so massive. They have like right. sixty thousand plus people in attendance going to the L.A. Convention Center, running around to L.A. Live or the Microsoft Theater to see these press conferences, or just to get some swag or whatever it might be. You know, that's a mm. huge part of the E three experience and. I, I can see a situation or a scenario where Jeff Keighley wants to make Summer Games Fest kind of that same thing where it's in person, you yeah. can go to an event and witness it all, but it'll be <laughs> it'll be the battle of LA the though. They could, they, don't could. Have to do, they could do like Lake Las Vegas or something. Yeah, uh, but then, but, in that, in but that then case, it's like you're breaking see... apart the yeah, uh, yeah, attendance the for and I yeah, don't exactly. necessarily think yet, maybe far down in the future, I think that's where Jeff Keeley's going I don't think that's his immediate plan yet um I think it takes a lot to put on a whole convention with a lot of publishers buying in a lot of reasons for fans wanting to attend I think the best way for summer games fest or game fest and for e3 to kind of work together is e3 just scrap their virtual show of like when you're live at the show floor and give that to Jeff Keighley with Summer Game Fest to cover Mm -hmm. E3 and to create all these like um, publishers that don't have virtual showcases or just drop trailers, have them go to Summer Game Fest stage um, and do deep dives. But doing that, I think it's really hard because then it's not necessarily giving Jeff Keighley what he wants because he does want to drop big announcements, right? Kind of like holds him back um, from being able to do that. And then at the E3 side, I feel like they do see a value in having their own coverage of their show um, where they have their own host at E3 and they do their whole like devs coming up and talking about the games and stuff that they wouldn't want to let that go. I think if they do have to be separate um which it seems like they are going to be at least for the years to come then jeff really just needs to focus on how he's going to make it more unique than e3 and a a tag along so maybe going to the developers like 2k that usually don't do full pressers um right they just yeah. They usually have small video events and having just right. those other publishers and developers that don't do full scale shows do something at Summer Game Fest. I think that's where you start off with instead of trying Imagine. to do everything. And then you yeah. tie in celebrity cameos and then musical performances that fans want to see. Yeah. Imagine Jeff Keighley bringing PlayStation Experience back under his brand. Oh, Ooh. Huge. That'd be insane. That would be that would be a massive get. <laughs> it would be, but that that's like the complete opposite antithesis of what Sony is about right now. Where they're like, we don't need any of you. Yeah. Yeah. Healy, <laughs> right. ESA, we don't need any of you. We're PlayStation. We'll do it ourselves. <laughs> you know. And the yeah. thing yeah. is, PlayStation so- was still dropping like trailers during yeah. E3, which right. really yeah. now. Um, and I could be. I I know you're going to say something, so finish your yeah. thought. But I'm just going to put this out it's there. Fair. Do you think? We talked about it a little bit before E3 happened. Do you think publishers see a value now after this E3 that they should be at the show? And Caboose, no, you could start I, off. I still, I still do. I still do because, again, there is a huge part of that that in-person experience that adds to the fun of E3 or that adds to essentially, I guess, the marketing of these games because it's some in some instances, you get the opportunity to play these games, get a demo, you know, get your hands sure. on it. And for some yeah. people that is their reason to want to either buy it or not. Mm -hmm. If they get a chance to get in line and try out a game that they're really looking forward to, or even a game that they're maybe not sure about, they get to play it, and if they like it, they're all in. That's happened to me a couple of instances at E3 where there's a couple of games I got to play that I wasn't sure about or I wasn't too on board with, and once I got to play them, I was like, wait, hold on, this is actually a lot of fun. I think I should get this game. So I think that that applies for a lot of people. That's something... That, uh, that works for a lot of people getting swag, you know, getting the like getting a T-shirt or, you know, I know there was if anyone remembers E3, I can't remember what year it was when Super Mario Odyssey was coming out. Oh, and they my had those gosh. Hats yes. People were people fighting, were insane fighting over, over hats. the hats in the lineup. Yeah. And like they had to just stop giving out yeah. hats. But, <laughs> yeah. but OK, I want to clarify then. Not the not the show floor, because there's obviously a value there uh, being right. in person and having demos happen with media and fans. Okay. 
the presentation of being a tie to E3 press conferences. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think there's zero value in partnering wow. with the ESA. Absolutely. I mean, you look, I think this year is a prime example of that. Look at who came out of E3 with a successful presentation, and it's all the ones that have proven themselves in years past to have been able to do it themselves. You got Xbox, they did a really good job. Nintendo did a really good job. Devolver Digital did a really good job. Ubisoft, to, even to a lesser extent, did a pretty solid job. It's it's everyone that kind of all have always relied on the ESA to provide a platform for them. Square Enix, yeah, they came out, they showed Guardians and everything, but then the presentation just kind of went on, and I don't think that it had the luster it, it should have. Capcom's was... I, I would say an absolute disaster and yes, kind of yes, just a, yes. and and I think that is really on the ESA's back um, because these publishers come to them and they're like, listen, we're coming to you, paying you for a platform. Are they not helping them? Are they not looking at this presentation and being like, guys, I, Capcom, I don't know if this is a the best idea to end your presentation on an esports sign up. You know, like, yeah. listen, I know Street Fighter is huge and everything, but how how is no one, you know, talking to Capcom through this and saying, listen, we're we're going to guide you through this and make sure that your presentation is the best for E3. And I think we that's also really don't know if those conversations well, happened or not. Absolutely. Right? Like, yeah. Absolutely. But I, you I, I just you get a sense that they don't like it feels yeah. like these when you are doing an E3 conference, it's kind of like. Just reveal the news you want to reveal. And I understand because of, you know, all these publishers and developers wanting to keep everything close to them. They may not want mm -hmm. to share with people at ESA what they're going to announce. Sure. But I feel like there should be some sort of guideline in terms of because E3, it's like there's so many different audiences of gamers that are going to be watching these pressers. Of but course. for the most part, it's a lot of casual more you know action adventure gamers that play on their couch a lot of console gamers that are going to be here uh, maybe not competitive heavy because they're 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 watching other things right um yeah. so knowing that audience they should have some sort of esa should consult if they're not already with these publishers and developers to add that value in how they're adding value to the developer. Exactly. And that's, yeah. and I think that goes in hand in hand with why these publishers have to pay in to get yes. on to E3, especially in a digital world. Like what are they paying them for? Yeah. And I think that's why that's PlayStation already backed out of right. really being a part of that showcase and just doing their own thing. They're still See, on the show floor when you go yeah. right? right but yeah. they're just not at the presentation so yeah. there's two different businesses happening here with the sa and if they really want to keep this presentation that that core that makes e3 so special to a lot of people in gaming they have to add value to developers and publishers yeah, yeah. well in and terms i think of the capcom thing too i think that the reason why kind of the the street fighter esports may this is pure speculation mm -hmm. but with PlayStation acquiring Evo and then PlayStation not being as heavily involved, I think that they could be saving a heavy hitter announcement for when PlayStation mm, and yeah. Evo kind of announce what their official partnership is going to look like. That was yeah. my takeaway from that, but I could be completely wrong. Yeah, sure. yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. Um, one other thing that I do want to talk about is this kind of was the E3 where everyone got all the predictions wrong because it was a unconventional yes. E3. Um, Steve, who was most accurate with our predictions um, yeah, that yeah. we made before that the show? Steve was keeping track uh, before E3 happened. We kind of gave our thoughts on what would be announced. I know I lost. Um, so I'll just put that out there. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. And, and just to kind of, kind of preface because some of the conversations that we had, we, we started speaking, speculating like could this happen i didn't take those into consideration i i just made the firm uh firm predictions like this is going to happen mm -hmm. uh made by any of us and uh i'll just go through it malik you lost i'm sorry <laughs> no it's okay uh, i make the craziest predictions <laughs> you did you did and and you know what you came out with the elder ring one so you got one point for that one so oh congrats, yeah you know yeah <laughs> you, you, you were at least on the scoreboard uh caboose yeah. you got two obviously with uh halo infinite multiplayer and then the idos montreal guardians of the galaxy game Sweet. and then um 
Yeah, me and you, Camille, we came in first, tied. Wait, what? Four, four points. Yeah, yeah. I'll go. I'll go through. So, Camille, you got the Skyward Amiibo, Halo Infinite uh, campaign gameplay, uh, which we we saw some of it tied into that that um, yeah. that trailer. Far Cry Six, and then Rainbow Six Extraction, all in there. And then uh, for me, Xbox uh, Design Labs returns. I. I'm playing fast and loose with this one because it was part of Xbox uh, Game Showcase Extended. Part of E3, uh, I'm counting it. Yes, count um, it, count it, count it. Yeah, a Writer's Republic was shown off again with a September release. Capcom gave some updates for Resident Evil DLC and then uh, Reverse and then a Borderland, Borderlands game announcement um, as well. So, but we didn't get the trailer for the no movie. Trailer for the no. movie. Oh, Crazy, oh but we did but we did get uh Randy Pitchford going up to Kevin Hart's trailer and annoying him while he was on break. So I guess that was worth something. <laughs> it, it makes up for it. That's yeah. true. That's true. Um E3 is always a pleasure, especially when we have uh each other to kind of share the experiences with and you guys right. at home as well. Um and and that's kind of it for this episode of the squad cast and unfortunately is also so our last episode of the Squadcast. We will not see you next week, um, but it is the last episode for now. We don't know if we'll be returning. We hope so. Uh, but I just want to say that Steve, Malik, uh, Caboose, like it's been awesome co-hosting with you guys. You guys have been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I don't think I could have thought of anyone else better to do this with. Um, and I love all of our corny jokes and our nerding out ways. So thanks for joining <laughs> yeah. us on this, well, me on this journey. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun, Camille. I know that like we've been we've been doing this for I think uh, over a year, year. or yeah, yeah about a year, which is it's been a lot of fun. I've uh, been really enjoying the conversations that we had, bantering about Death Stranding and how bad it is, all the fun <laughs> stuff that we've gone over over this last year. Having Steve come on, having Malik come on, um, it's been a been a nice little squad family. And it is unfortunate this is our last episode. Hopefully for now, mm-hmm. and we may see mm-hmm. you guys again soon, but. Yeah, it's been an amazing journey. Yeah, I just like starting out as like guesting and just like being able to like show up and hang out with you guys at first and then finally, um, you know, earning my spot uh, as like a, a static chair. It was just an amazing experience. Uh, and I love talking video games with you guys. Uh, we've had some great discussions. You guys have opened my eyes to, you know, some areas of the gaming industry that I never thought I would explore. Um, and it's just, it's been a fun ride. We've got to keep the tinfoil hat uh, theories going. <laughs> got to keep it alive. Um, um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for for having me. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna echo a lot of what what Malik said. I mean, Caboose and Camille, you guys were the DNA of the show going all the way back to the, its inception. And um, yeah, to, it was an honor to be brought on as the as another static chair. And I think it, it, with any project, it's kind of hard to step into something that's already well established and kind of find out where you fit. And uh, I, I didn't want to come in and just like not provide something unique. To it i you know i you, you come in and then i always had to like find out where exactly i fit and how i could bounce off like your guys personalities and provide the audience uh for, with something new and hopefully entertaining and educational in some aspect i hope you know at the end of the day we all we all did that and then i think we really hit our stride when malik came in as the fourth and yeah been doing it ever since but yeah um yeah thank thank the audience for for everything because i mean without them it wouldn't have been worth it we've just been talking to ourselves and you know as much fun as that would have been but yeah it's, it's all it's all about the audience and i mean one more one more uh, tinfoil hat here for the road and i want to say we'll come back at some point right you yeah. know that, that's always the hope yeah. you know but uh yeah th- thanks uh for everyone involved in making this awesome um and you know there hopefully we will come back in the future and you know that doesn't mean it's the end of us we just don't we just don't get dusted into thin air um, yeah, no snap that I know, snap. you just see at the end of the squad cast we just like dust um anyways but that we're still so around good. we're still around you can find every yeah. one of us on our socials and uh doing different projects so steve what are you working on where can we find you uh, yeah, so I just wrapped up on like a whole bunch of or a bit of like E3 content over on squadstate.com. You can uh, find like I wrote about at Halo Infinite and how important this is going to be for the uh, the franchise. Uh, so you can go read that and uh, continue finding my pieces there. And you can find me on Twitter at Svigvari. Awesome. Malik. Uh, I am no longer going to be with Squad, unfortunately. But I will say 
go read Steve's articles. They're amazing. They're great. Keep following all the content on there. Keep reading because there are some really talented uh, writers and just like create content, creative minds. Um, I am moving on. I will be working at Gen G Esports uh, as a content creator um, and a digital media producer. Uh, I'll be working on their video editing stuff. But you can find my streams live. W Malik over at Twitch TV. Uh, Twitch TV. See Caboose. I all this time and i still don't have the rhythm roll down like you do oh, no one man. does it like caboose but yeah oh, it, it's that. been fun you can find me on twitch I, I stream pretty sporadically other than that you can find me on twitter uh at malik show and he out- actually has a nice uh sting or it, actually it's a closer yeah. uh an end to his stream that he just set up uh Dude. inspired I, by I ripped adult, off adult swim, swim. Yeah, yeah but, but it's I, so good i love it it's so good <laughs> so you. good so check that out and caboose yeah, uh, with the Guardians game being like officially announced, been covering that over on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash caboose. I'm definitely going to be streaming it too when it comes out, twitch.tv slash caboose. Got my Mortal Kombat X tournament going on as well alongside my co-commentator, uh, co-commentator, sorry, Destroyer. And yeah, just keep up with my shenanigans, Twitter and Instagram at caboose ek. Awesome. Uh, for myself, I have lots of shenanigans going on and you really just need to tune in. Uh, so <laughs> on all the socials <laughs> at this is Camco, I have a lot of cool projects coming up and you know, some I can't announce yet, but hopefully soon I can. So uh, yeah, at this is Camco, you could find me there um, as well as I'm pretty sure I'll pop up around here somewhere sometime. Uh, and of course you could find everything squad at squadstate.com and on socials at squad state. So stay tuned uh, because there's a lot coming to the squad uh, website in terms of content. And this is not the last that you're going to hear from us. So we look forward to seeing you guys sometime in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.